Oh 
Shalom, everyone. Welcome. Good to see you all this morning. Um, as you can tell, many of us feel like this is actually the best kept secret of the service is this first half hour or so with all the singing, which we'll actually get a little extra of today because we have Hallel in a little bit. Yeah, I know Neil Spears came to Shul on time just for Hallel, so good to have you. Um, and it really is true that this is the part of our service where we have so much song. We're about to go into this next part of our prayer, this prayer, Nishmat Kol Chai, which talks about the, the breath of every living being praising God. And later in that same prayer, there's this line that I want to look at this morning, which is, Ilu finu What if our mouths were full of song like the sea? And it seems a little, I don't know, unexpected maybe, or maybe not. But that this idea is that at this moment, our obligation, our goal, our hope is for our mouths to be feel, filled with song. And that's really what we're doing this morning. And if you're here to celebrate Ziva's bat mitzvah, then filling your mouths with song and joy and praise may be very easy this morning. And if you're someone who's coming in with maybe a heavier heart this morning, that might be a little bit harder. And so I think the hope is in this early part of our service that wherever you are, wherever you came into this space being, that you can access some moment in the next few minutes of feeling like your mouth is filled with song and with praise for something, even if it's a very, very, very small thing, but to find a way to really embody that moment and really feel what it feels like for your mouth to be filled with song. I know many of you in this room don't know all these words. Maybe you don't know any of these words. Maybe this is your first time at a Shabbat service, in which case we're even more excited to have you in some ways. Always great to have new people with us. You can always just sing with lie, 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 yai, nai, nai, la, 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 whatever speaks to you. Um, even if you don't know the words, you can always find a way in. And so as we continue this most songful part of our prayer, is that a word, songful? Felt, felt like a word. Yeah, okay that you really find a way in this part of our prayer to just access some moment of real filling your mouth with song. We'll continue with Nishmat on the top of page 145. Nishmat <laughs> You 
are able.
152 will come back together in the middle of 153. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to just pause for a moment here. Um, as many of you know, um, we are interviewing rabbinic candidates, and we're very excited to welcome Eliana Willis to our community this Shabbat, and it's really like a homecoming also because Eliana's beautiful family is very much part of the community, and many of you know Aaron and Natalie, and it's great to have you here in from Boston. We're going to get to hear um, a lot more from Eliana later today, 
Um, but she's going to offer us now just some brief words to help set our attention, uh, a kavanah for going into the Amidah this morning. Shabbat shalom and Chodesh Tov. Because today is Rosh Chodesh Adar, which means that we add a special prayer to our Amidah this morning, Ya'alev Yavo. We say to God, may the thought of us rise up and reach you and arrive and be seen and be desired and be heard and acknowledged and remembered. The rhythm of the Hebrew words is repetitive. Ya'alev, yavo, v'yagia, v'yara'ev, v'yaratzeh, and so on. It's almost as if we're not quite sure that it will actually happen, that we'll actually reach God. This prayer speaks to the deep need within each of us to be seen, to be heard, to be acknowledged, the Piazetsner Rebbe teaches that this desire for recognition occurs even within the self. That within ourselves, our own soul yearns to be noticed and understood. Our feelings, he writes, are a tentative probing of the soul. Our feelings are the way our soul reaches out. He imagines our feelings as thin and trickling streams. When we pay attention, and allow ourselves to feel them, they widen and flow. We come to know ourselves better, and we, come more, we become more connected to our soul and to God. He invites us to be curious about our own sensations and emotions, because they're invitations from the soul as she seeks to be known. And there are times when a feeling arises that for whatever reason we don't attend to, we don't notice or acknowledge it. We can go through the motions of our day. We can even go through the prayers without really paying attention to how we feel. The thin stream fades away without seeing the light of day. It's still there though, stuck somewhere, hidden behind all the noise and distractions, but it's still there, a part of our soul seeking to be known. So today as we dive in, as we express our desire to be seen and heard, I wonder if there's something within you, within any of us, that hasn't yet had the space to emerge. A feeling, a hope, a request, maybe. This time for prayer is the space we've made to let ourselves experience it and express it, to let it rise up to reach us, to reach God, to be seen and heard and acknowledged. We'll invite everyone to please rise in whatever way you're able. We're in the bottom of 158. <laughs> Oh, 
begins on page 159. Don't forget the additions for Rosh Chodesh. We're going to turn now to Kadisha Tom, the Mourner's Kaddish, on page 121, and we hold with love this morning Ben Paul, a Limudim teacher, um, and beloved member of our community whose brother Alexander died this week. 
I hope that his memory is always a blessing and that Ben and his family find strength in the days ahead. And also to our dear Adrian Gumpert and Julie, David, and Ingrid, who's uh, David and Adrian's father, Peter, died this week and will be buried tomorrow. Um, and we hold them with great love, too. And there'll be more information coming out of how the community can support them in the coming days. For everyone who's holding fresh grief, everyone who's in their year of mourning, and anyone observing a yard site, the anniversary of the death of a loved one, I invite you to join me on page 121 for Kadish Yatom. Yitzkadal, Yitzkadash, Shemei Rabba. V'yalma divra kirite, v'yamlich malchute, v'chayechon, v'yamechon, v'chayei dechol v'yit Yisrael, v'adala v'bizman kariv, v'imru, amen. Yehei Shemei Rabba mevorach, le'olam omei omaya, yitbarach, v'yishtabach, v'yitpa'ar, v'yitromam, v'yitnaseh, V'yitadar, v'yitala, v'yitalal, shmei dekutsha, v'yichu, le'ila minko, birchata, v'shirata, tush v'chata, v'nechemata, da'amiram ba'alma, v'imru, amen. Yehei shlama rabba min shemaya, v'chayim alinu ba'alkol Yisrael, v'imru, amen. Osei shalom b'imramav, hu ya'asei shalom, alinu ba'alkol Yisrael, v'imru, amen. Zichronam livracha, may all of our loved ones' memories continue to be a blessing. All right, folks, so today is Rosh Chodesh, which means we are gonna turn now to Hallel, and I'll invite Eliana to come back up. And by the way, I was, when you were speaking, Eliana, I was thinking about what it might mean for you to be back in this space. I shall have a grad in this, uh, <laughs> in this very place, now about to be a rabbi, and just here to share your Torah and your spirit with us. And, um, and so we welcome you uh, here with great, uh, with great joy. Thank you for leading us in this, um, in this really beautiful um, compilation of psalms to help us try to hold joy. Um, I'm going to invite everyone to please rise, and whatever way you're able, we'll turn to page 316 for Hallel, for Rosh Chodesh. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu v'mitzvotav, v'tzivanu likro et Oh, uh-huh. 
We'll go from Simcha to Simcha and invite up our Bat Mitzvah today, Ziva Turaf, along with her parents, Ilana and Stefan, and her sibling, Sonia, to come forward to the Bima. We'll turn back to 168 for the beginning of the Torah service. I'll have you stay standing. Let's keep the energy up. 168. And we, can we call Ryan up? In Kamochama Elohim
Vei <laughs> Welcome, everyone. We're going to turn uh, now to our Torah reading. We're beginning on page 465 in your red chumash. Both the books are red. <laughs> they look awkwardly similar. This one says Eitz Chaim on the cover. We're reading uh, from the book of Exodus, uh, Parshat Mishpatim, page 465. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Hashem 
For the seventh Aliyah, we are um, calling up people who are observing, uh, who are marking a birthday, either this past week or this coming week. So come up and uh, and please join us um, for our first Aliyah this morning. Um, Debbie, Sipra, and Marsha all came up because they're marking a yard site, uh, the anniversary of a death of a loved one. And I just want to invite you to, if you would, just to say the name of the person that you're holding today and your uh, relationship with them so that we can all hear their names in this place. Esma. We call Richard and Niza up for our third Aliyah today. And before we do, um, we just want to take a moment to bless all of our, um, all of our loved ones here who are marking a, a birthday right now. Um, and, and I also want to welcome Lois's uh, many friends who came here to join for this birthday celebration today. So thank you for being with us. And to everyone who's celebrating, thank you for giving us a moment to just lift you up in this, uh, in this place. Just one little word of Torah for you, which is, um, we're going to talk a lot about this parsha as the morning goes on, but many people point out it, it's a little, it feels like a little bit of a come down from, from Yitro and divine revelation and fire and thunder and God's voice booming on a mountain to Mishpatim, where it says, Ve'ela Mishpatim asher tasim nehem, like, here's what you actually have to do day to day. And some of it is pretty unsavory. And so, um, and so I, I want to just take a moment and say that what we know is that what makes a life 
worth living, what makes a life well lived, is not only these big, awesome moments, but it's the quiet moments of doing the stuff of life, the stuff of building a home, the stuff of building a community, um, the stuff of walking through life with sacred responsibility and with love that actually gives meaning to our lives. And so I bless you that as you now reach this marker this year for each of you, that you're able to take a little space and reflect on what you find most meaningful um, in your life and that you can continue to do so with great love and care. Um, we're so deeply grateful for all of you for the ways that you make our community better. And I wanna give a special shout out to Michelle Rosenthal, our board chair, um, and Simon, because Michelle is literally in the trenches every single day doing the work of transforming the great big fiery vision into daily acts of love and care for one another. And we're really grateful to be in partnership with you to all of you, we wish you a happy birthday. May it be a year of health, of inspiration, and of renewed hope. Happy birthday. Our third aliyah today is on page 466. Amen, amen. Nala Amod, Nama Bat Ruven, Bat Shaba, Vephraim, Ben Yaakov, Vidari, Vesther, Bat Malka, Veliahu, Lalea, Harevi Eat. Um, for the third Aliyah, Jeremy came up in order to honor his parents, Richard and Nitsa, um, who are marking their 50th anniversary. And so I um, just want to take a moment to honor your parents um, and to thank them for sharing you with our community and with the world and to bless them um, with continued joy and new discovery um, every single day. 50 years of marriage is quite something. Um, and may they be blessed um, with great health and continued deep friendship and love. Uh, Mazel Tov. The fourth Aliyah is chapter 22, verse 19. And we'll have Neva, Albert, and Ramona come on up for the fourth Aliyah. Adonai, Hamavara, Baruch Adonai, Baru Adonai, Hamavara, Lerlam Baed, Baru Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Milch Haolam, Asher Baharbanu Miko Haamin, Vina Tamanu et Torato, Baruch Ata Adonai, Notain Hatora. Amen. Amen. Zove achla Elohim yochoram bilti ladonai levado veger lo tonev lo tilchatsenu ki gerim heitem beeretz mitzrayim. 
Kol almana viatom lo tanun im ana im ane tane oto ki im saok it ak elai shamoa eshmat akato bechara api baharagti etchem becharev vehayu nshechem almanot uvenechem yatomim im kasef talvet. Ami et he ani ma lo tihe lo genoshe lo te simon alab nashach im chavol tachbol salmat reecha ad bo hashemesh te shivenu lo ki hi chesuta levada kesuta kesuta levada hi sil simlatole oro. Bame ishkab, behaya ki itzak elai, beshamati ki chanun ani. Baruch atadunai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu et Torah men, yav vayaya olam, natabitem heinu, Baruch ata Adonai, notein ha Torah. Amen. Amen. Nala Mod. Dorit bat Shalom ve Sultanat ve bat Sheva bat Sarva Mechael ve Reuven ben Shimon ve Sara laliyah hachamishit. Um, we, before we go to the fifth aliyah, just take a moment to honor Neva, Albert, and Ramona. Um, these are Ziva's. Um, and, aunt and uncle who are um, celebrating with us today. We wish you mazal tov, and it's wonderful to have you here to celebrate today. Mazal tov. Uh, we're on page 470, chapter 22, verse 27. This is um, Ziva's grandparents. Elohim, lo tikalel, benasi va mechal at aor, va tachav di mechal lo tacher, bechor benecha titen li, ken ta asel shorcha letzunecha, shiva at yamim yichyeh imimo, vayom hashmini titen oli, vayon shekodesh tihyum li, vasar vasadeh terfa, lo tochelu, la kele tachifun oto, lo tisa shem ashav, Alta shed the ha in Russia, the yod at Hamas, Loti Achre Rabim, the road, Velot Ane Ari, Lintod, Achre Rabim, the Hatod, Veda, the Tedar Vervo, Kitivka, Shore, Oyvha, Ahamoro, Toe, Hashev Tashivenu, Lo. Ki tire chamor snacha rovet tachad maso achalot ha mazov lo azov ta azov imo. Baruch Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech halam. Asher natalanu natorato emet v'haye olam natabeto menu baruch ato adonai no ten hasorah. Amen. Amen. 
Nalamo dilana vad yakov dori bishalomo ben ruven vevat shava laliyah shishit. And before we go to the sixth aliyah, just a moment um, to honor Dorit, Barbara, and Robert. Um, these are Ziva's grandparents, and it is great. It is a great joy uh, to have you here with us, and we wish you mazal tov, and may you be blessed with years of health and strength, so you can continue to celebrate with your beautiful family. Mazal tov. We're going to offer Misha Berach now a prayer for healing. If there's someone who you're holding in your heart today, or if you yourself um, need a little bit of strengthening of body or spirit, I want to invite you to either rise or raise your hand or make eye contact. We'll make our way around this room. And uh, we'll invite you to tell us who you're thinking about this morning um, and your relationship with them so that we can collectively lift them up in the hopes that... Uh, that they find strength and healing in the days ahead. Refuesh the ma, our deepest prayers for healing for all of those whose names were lifted up today and everyone we're holding in our hearts. Um, we're going to turn to the sixth aliyah now. We're on page 472, and Alana and Stefan will come up. Baruch Adonai Hamborah, Baruch Adonai Hamborah, Leolam Ba'ed, 
Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Bachabanu Mikol Hamim Benatan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Tishmitana, <laughs> Lama an yanua, shocha vachamarecha, vina fesh bena matacha, vahager, uchol, asher martilachem, tisha meru, vashem elohim, acharim, lo taskiru, lo yishama al picha. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher natan lanu Torah emet, Bechaye olam nata bitochinu, Baruch ata Adonai, Noten haTorah. Amen. Na la mod, na la mod, na la amod, Ziva batalana v'shlomo, Bachor apa mitzvah, lalia hashavid. And before we go to the seventh aliyah, I just want to take a moment to honor Alana and Stefan, Ziva's parents. Um, and in the, uh, in the aliyah that was read when your brother and sister were up here for their aliyah earlier, um, there's just a line that I want to lift up for us for just a moment. You can come close. Um, and you can stay here for her aliyah. Um, there's a line that comes amidst all of these laws that we hear about in Parshat Mishpatim, and it says that if you lend someone, if you take your neighbor's garment in pledge, you have to return it to your neighbor before the sun sets. And the presumption here is that, that actually the just thing to do would be to keep it, because they have, you took the thing in pledge and then they haven't come through on their side of the deal, but the Torah says you have to give it back to them anyway, right? So you have the rightful claim to the garment that you took in pledge, but you have to give it back. Why? Because the Torah says, it's his only clothing. It's all he has. So I don't care that you're right. You have to be decent. I don't care that the law might be on your side. You have to do what, what actually is just, which sometimes goes beyond the letter of the law. And it says, in what else is he going to sleep if you keep his clothing? So I don't care that you think you have a just claim. The real justice is in actually looking at your neighbor and seeing your neighbor as a human being who's in pain and acknowledging their pain and being above and beyond, being decent before all. And I'm just thinking about this, you know, this project of raising children in the world and, and, trying to, and trying to teach them to do the right thing and to be respectful and to follow the rules and trying to teach them that they're part of a community that hands down to them these sacred traditions and these sacred laws. And at the heart of all of it is this, like at the end of the day, be, be decent, be good, see the human beings before you. And these two, Sonia and Ziba, are in their heart of hearts just good. They're just good people in the world, which means that you achieved beyond beyond already. And so I just want to take a moment to praise you as parents uh, for, for bringing these wondrous people into, uh, into our community, into the world, and for teaching them to look between and beyond what is demanded of them in society to actually figure out what is the best way, the most heartfelt way for them to live their lives. And um, we wish you a huge mazel tov, and it's been a joy to watch you both grow in the world, and may we all be blessed with many more years together to continue to walk through life. Mazel tov, mazel tov. And now Ziva's Aliyah, we're on page 700, 474, chapter 23, verse 14. Baruch Hu et 
Adonai Chambora. Baruch Adonai Chambora Chiyolam Ba'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Elohim Melech Haolam. Asher Bachor Banu Mikol Chamim. V'Na'atan Lanu Et Torato. Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. Shalosh Yalim Tachogli Bashana Et Chag Hamatzot Tishmur Shivat Yamim Tachal Matzot Kasher Tviti Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natan Lanu Torat Emet Vehayei Olam Nata Betochenu Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Amen I invite everyone to please rise as the second Sefer Torah is put uh, on the table. Amen. 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 We call our first Hagba. The Maftir Aliyah is on page 930. Because it's Rosh Chodesh, we are reading today from the book of Numbers, chapter 28, verse 9. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvorach. 
ברוך אדוני המבורך לעולם ועד, ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר בחר בנו מכל העמים ונתן לנו את תורתו, ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. וביום השבת שני כבשים בני שנה תמימים ושני יסרנים סולת מנחה בלולב השמן ולכאוב עולת שבת בשבתו על עולת התמיד ונזכר ובראשי הוג'יהם תקריבו עולה לאדוני פערים בני ועקר שניים ואייל אחד כבשים בני שנה שבעה תמימים ושלושה שרנים סולת מנחה בלולב ושמן דפר חכד ושני שרנים סולת מלך פלולה ושמן לעיר חכד בישרון ישרון סולת מלך פלולה ושמן לחבש חכד הולך רעד נכוע איש של אדוני ונזכיהם חצי חכין יחיה לפר שישית חכין לעיר ורביעית חכין לכבש יין זאת עולת חודש בחודשו לחודשי השנה ושעיר עזים אחד לחטאת לאדוני על עולת התמיד יעשה ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת וחיי עולם נטה בתוכנו ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. אמן אמן פליז רייז נא לעמוד המגביה בגלל הספר שני וזאת התורה אשר שם משה לפני בני ישראל אבי אדוני ביד משה We're turning to our Haftarah, which will be read by Akiva. Um, I just want to take a moment to thank Akiva Potak, who is the extraordinary teacher of so many of our students, including Ziva today. But there's literally a generation of students who've been trained um, by this wonderful teacher, and we just feel so blessed to have you as our teacher and community member and friend. And today, the reader of our Haftarah. So we're going to turn to page one. One, two, two, one. We're reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 66. Starting verse 10. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher bachar bin vi'im tovim v'ratza v'divahem hanemarim be'emet. Baruch atah Adonai habocher b'torah uv'moshe avdo uv'yisrael amo uv'in v'yei ha'emet v'atzedek. שמחו את ירושלים וגילו בה כל אוהביה שישו איתה משוש כל המתאבלים עליה 
למאנטין כוס ואתם משוד תנחומיה, למען תמוץ ובהתענגתם מזיז כבודה. כי כה אמר אדוני, הנני נוטה אליה, כנהר שלום, וכנח על שוטף כבוד גויים וינקתם, על צד תנשאו ועל ברכיים תשאו שאו. כאיש אשר עמו תנחמנו, כן אנוכי אנחם חם ובירושלים תנוחמו. וריתם ושש ליבכם, ועצמותיכם קדשת יפרחנה, ונודעה יד אדוני את עבודיו, ואת זעם את אויביו. כי הנה אדוני באש יבוא, וחשופה מרכבותיו, להשיב בחמה אפו וגערתו בלהבי אש, כי באש אדוני נשפט ובחרבו את כל בשר ורבו חללי אדוני המתקדשים והמתארים אל הגנות אחר אחת בתווך אוכלי בשר החזיר והשקץ והעכבר יחדיו יסופו נאום אדוני ואנוכי מעשיהם ומחשבותיהם בא לקבץ את כל הגויים והלשונות ובאו וראו את כבודי ושמתי בהם עוד ושילחתי מהם פליטים אל הגויים תרשיש פול ולוד מושכי קשת תובן ותובל ויוון האיים הרחוקים אשר לא שמעו את שמי ולא ראו את כבודי והגידו את כבודי בגויים והביאו את כל אחיכם מכל הגויים מנחה לאדוני בסוסים וברכב ובצבים ובפרדים ובכרכרות על הר קודשי ירושלים אמר אדוני כאשר יביאו בני ישראל את המנחה בכלי טהור בית אדוני וגם מהם אקח לכהנים ללוויים אמר אדוני כי כאשר השמיים החדשים והארץ החדשה אשר אני עושה עומדים לפני נאום אדוני כן יעמוד זרעכם ושמכם והיה מדי חודש בחודשו ומדי שבת בשבתו יבוא כל בשר להשתחוות לפני אמר אדוני ויצאו וראו בפגרי האנשים הפושעים בי כי תולתם לא תמות וישם לא תכבה והיו דראון לכל בשר והיה מדי חודש בחודשו ומדי שבת בשבתו יבוא כל בשר להשתחוות לפני אמר אדוני ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם צור כל העולמים צדיק בכל הדורות האל הנאמן האומר ועושה המדבר ומקיים שכל דבריו אמת וצדק נאמן אתה הוא אדוני אלוהינו ונאמנים דבריך ודבר אחד מדבריך אכול לא ישוב ריקם כי אל מלך נאמן ורחמן אתה ברוך אתה אדוני האל הנאמן בכל דבריו רחם על ציון כי היא בית חיינו ולעלובת נפש תושיע במהרה וימינו ברוך אתה אדוני משמח ציון בבניה שמחנו אדוני אלוהינו באליהו הנביא עבדיך ובמלכות בית דוד משיחך במהרה יבוא ויגל ליבנו על כיסו לא ישב זר ולא ינחלו עוד אחרים את כבודו כי בשם קודשך נשבעת לו שלא יכבה נרו לעולם ועד ברוך אתה אדוני מגן דוד על התורה ועל העבודה ועל הנביאים ועל יום השבת הזה שנתת לנו אדוני אלוהינו לקדושה ולמנוחה לכבוד ולתפארת על הכל אדוני אלוהינו אנחנו מודים לך ומברכים אותך יתברך שמך בפי כל חי תמיד לעולם ועד ברוך אתה אדוני מקדש השבת Shekoch, Shekoch, thank you, Akiva. And now Ziva um, has prepared some words of Torah because she has spent the last year not only learning how to read Torah so beautifully, and thank you um, for what you shared with us already, 
um, but also to interpret this week's Torah portion through her unique lens, and I'm very excited for all of you to hear where she landed. So, Ziva, preach. <laughs> Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. In my school, we have a school uniform. Um, I understand where schools are coming from with school uniforms, but at my school, we aren't allowed to wear black socks. I'll go back to this later. My Torah portion is Mishpatim. In Hebrew, Mishpatim means laws. My portion is listing the many laws God gives Moses when he is on, when he is on Mount Sinai. These rules are in addition to the Ten Commandments, and they set up the framework to how the Israelites are going to live now that they are free. But why are rules even important anyway? Why can't people just do whatever they want? Sounds more fun, doesn't it? This is a question I've asked myself upon reading my portion. The answer I came up with is that rules are the difference between a civilized society and a, bar and a barbaric one. Rules, rules are important, and they hold a society together. They are mainly set in place for our safety and well-being. They set a shared standard. All in all, rules maintain the peace and should be set for the people by the people, and issues occur when that doesn't happen. But some of the rules make sense and some of them don't. Now, for one of the rules in Mishpatim, it wants us to imagine that two men get into a fight and one of them hits the other with a rock. It tells us that if it that if it is the case that the man who is hit does not die but is better from his injuries, if he gets up and walks outdoors, the man who hit him would not be punished but must pay for the injuries he caused. This rule seems fair because it makes sense to pay for someone's injuries if you were the one who caused them. On the other hand, it also tells us that if a man were to steal an ox or sheep, he would have to pay back five oxen for the ox and four sheep for the sheep. This rule doesn't make sense because in biblical law, the basic rule is that a thief must give back double what they stole. But with this rule, the thief would have to pay back four or five, four or five times what they stole. Double is fair because not only are you paying back what you stole, but you are also compensating the person for having stolen from them. But paying someone back four or five times is just disproportionate. After reading this, I started thinking about how in my life, there are also rules that do and don't make sense. For example, in my school orchestra, I play the cello, and in any orchestra, there are rules you have to follow. For instance, if the conductor is telling you to play quietly, then you must play quietly. There is a reason that all good musical pieces have dynamics. Dynamics give a piece structure. If you are part of an orchestra, you can't play the piece however you'd like, or else it would clash with the other instruments and make it sound bad. If you want to play the piece the way you like, then you can go have your own solo performance. But that's the thing, society isn't a solo performance. It's a collaboration between all different types of people, just like how an orchestra has different types of instruments collaborating together to make music. What is the difference between a rule that does make sense and a rule that doesn't? A rule that makes sense is fair. A rule that doesn't make sense can be unfair. Rules that don't make sense don't really help the people. A good rule enriches and benefits the lives of everyone around. Fairness is important because without it, our rules would be useless or even harmful. It isn't just rules that make up a civilized society. It has to be fair rules. When a rule or law is unfair, the, when a rule or law is unfair, the obvious thing to do is to change it, or at least advocate for its change. Over the years, the rules on theft were changed by the rabbis. By the time we got to Maimonides, provided the thief admits what they did, they only have to pay back the value of what they stole. So that rule was changed as well. And we have modern examples of how unfair rules need to be changed. A contemporary example of this is people like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Susan B. Anthony. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. works to change unfair rules so that people will not be treated differently just because of their race. Susan B. Anthony worked to ensure that women had an equal right to vote. What all of these people had in common is that they saw rules that weren't fair and worked hard to change them. But by contrast, I've already mentioned how I didn't understand my school's rule that students can't wear black socks. This is a real life example of a rule that still doesn't make sense. Because why would you make a rule with no real purpose? Black socks aren't distracting, they aren't offensive, so why? This got me thinking about some other Jewish rules that might not make sense. Later in the Torah, there's actually another rule that any four-cornered garment needs to have tzitzit on the end, like the tali I am wearing today. This rule doesn't really make sense to me, so why am I obeying it? I have three reasons. Because it's tradition, 
because it shows people that I am a Jewish adult who's allowed to be part of a minion and does a Jewish adult things, because it shows I'm a part of the Jewish community. So if you see someone wearing tzitzit, you know they are Jewish, and if they see you wearing them, they know the same thing about you. So I've learned that sometimes I need to keep a rule, even if it might not make sense to me. And when I become an adult in the non-Jewish world, there are two kinds of rules I will need to follow. Some of them will make sense. When I get my driver's license, I will make sure to follow all the rules that are set to ensure a driver's safety, like driving on the right side of the road. When I get to be able to vote, I will be able to select people who I believe can change the rules that aren't fair. It feels good to know that I will have a say in my future. Maybe God gave the Israelites those rules so they would be able to take hold of them and decide their futures for themselves, like I will, like I will decide mine. But I will also keep some rules that don't make sense to me, like wearing my talit, because it has been passed down for me, from my grandparents to me, because, it's tradition, because tradition is important to me, and because it shows I'm a part of this community and the Jewish community everywhere. So what about my black socks? Should that rule be changed or not? On one hand, it still doesn't make sense. On the other hand, maybe it's a sign of custom community and belonging, like my talit. I guess I'll go along with the no black socks rule, at least for now, for these reasons, but we'll also be on the lookout for laws that don't serve a purpose or, are actually, or actually are unfair. Shabbat shalom. Well done, Siva. Well done. It's known that Mishpatim is one of the toughest parshiot in the Torah to talk about. And as I got to know you a little bit over the course of putting it together, I discovered and I love the way that you hold on to questions rather than running to answers. And Ziva, this is such an important life skill because the world is full of people who are always ready to give you the answer to things, to tell you what to do and to tell you how to think and to tell you what to believe. But to be able to listen as you listened to all of the advice about why is a talit like black socks and still to stand with both of your feet underneath you and say, no, I really am not sure about the black socks. Still, to hold on to your question, that's a superpower. It really is. And as you move towards being an adult, my wish and my prayer for you is that you hold on to your questions. You don't need to stand up and yell about them. But that expression that I saw so often on your face when we were working together that said, hmm, I need to think about that some more. That's a gift, Ziva. And I bless you that in a world full of people trying to give answers, you hold on to the gift of your questions and that you never, never stop asking them. Take a look around the room. This is your family. This is your community. We love you and we bless you and we want you to keep asking your questions. May God bless you and we wish you muzzle tough. And now let me ask your parents and Sonia to come back up again. And the people who have been given the task of holding the talit, would you please come up as well? And we invite everyone to please rise.
Yevarecha Adonai Vishmarecha Yair Adonai Panav Erecha Vehi Nureka Yisa Adonai Panav Erecha Vaya Sem Lecha Shalom Amen. Can you hear us? Um, May God, God bless you and keep you. May, may God's face shine upon you and may be gracious to you. May God lift up God's face to you and grant you peace. Amen. 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 Please rise in whatever way you're able on the top of page 183. We return the charge to the ark. Let's go. 
First of all, a huge mazel tov to Ziva. That was awesome. Congratulations. Um, and we thank Alana and Stefan for sponsoring our lunch today. I hope everyone will stick around. After services, we're going to make our way upstairs. Um, there are, there's an indoor staircase, outdoor staircase, and an elevator for those who need it. Um, we'll have lunch on the roof. 
And we are joined today um, by Eliana Willis, who you heard from a little bit before, um, who's going to be doing a lunch and learn. So folks, grab food. You'll sit for a couple minutes, and then we'll go into the Beit Midrash so that we can learn with, uh, with Eliana um, a little bit of Torah with her and then learn a little bit more about her and some time for Q&A to get to know her. Um, so I hope many of you will join us for this. We also have a number of other people who contributed today to our uh, Shabbat lunch. And so I want to thank Rabbi Len Scharzer, um, who contributed today to honor Lois's birthday. And we're so grateful. Um, it's, the, it's always the good time of year when Len and Lois are in L.A. So they're like half the time there and half the time here. And we like it when you're here. Um, thank you to uh, Jerry Grossman, who sponsored in celebration of Jerry's birthday, and, um, and Alana Artson. Um, thank you to the Artsons for sponsoring in honor of Alana's birthday, to uh, Professor Irene Tucker, um, in, oh, in memory of my dad, thank you, um, her birthday buddy, and my father's birthday was this past week, um, and my mom and, uh, and Dev and Larry and David and I contributed uh, also in memory of my father and, uh, and my grandfather, Pa Sam, um, whose 18th yard site was uh, the same day as my dad's birthday this year. Um, and we also thank Sipra Nemeth for uh, contributing in memory uh, the, for the yard site that you're marking and Debbie Unessi for yours. It's so, it's so meaningful, folks. Like these are just people who are hitting life moments and thinking, I want to lift up the name or the memory of a loved one. I want to celebrate a birthday and I'm going to do it by feeding this big community. And so we're so grateful and just ask you to take a look at your calendar and see when there are moments that you want to share with the community too. And this way we can all eat well um, week after week and also mo most importantly, really lift each other up with love. Um, I want to quickly mention that um, ICAR has an amazing early childhood center, a preschool, and we're now accepting applicants for, um, for next year, ages two to five. If you have questions about this, if you or a friend have a kid and you're looking for the perfect community, I feel so blessed that Levi got to go to this school um, and it was amazing and it's even better now. And so I wanna invite you to just check in with us. Beth is here, but a number of early childhood uh, parents are in the room and it's such a special and holy place and we would love uh, to get to know you and, and welcome your family into the community through this. Um, there, there, as you all know, um, there's an election coming up, and we have made a commitment as a community that we're going to be a 100% voting community. That means everyone in our community who's able to vote will vote, and not only for the big elections, not only for, for presidential elections, but for every single election, and that means we have to get educated on what's on that ballot. ICAR has endorsed Me Measure HLA. Uh, on the March 5th ballot, and uh, members of our, our, of our justice leadership, our Green Action leadership, are going to be around at lunch to be talking about it. So if you have questions, come and, uh, come and talk to them. One second, baby. One second, baby. Um, and finally, um, I just wanted to, I, I just, oh, t sorry, there are actually two more things. Um, we are having a hike uh, on Sunday at 9.30 at Stoneview Nature Center in Kenneth Hahn Park. So if you're looking for a way to connect to others in the community and also to be out in nature, I hope you'll join us for that at 9.30 on Sunday morning. Um, and the, um, the next Friday night that we have Shabbat Davening, which will be on February 23rd, um, we're very excited that Moshe Kasher will be with us, as in um, the renowned comedian and author and brother of Rabbi David Kasher, who's going to be talking about his new book, Subculture Vulture, um, in conversation with me. So um, we're excited to have Moshe here um, to do that. And the, uh, the last thing that I want to um, say right now is that I... Um, is that uh, we mentioned earlier Adrian and David, Julie and Ingrid and Adrian and, and Julie are here now and just um, extending to you our great love um, in this time of grieving for your beloved father, Peter. And we um, really pray that his memory is a blessing. There will be Shiva throughout the coming week. So please, I invite folks to, um, to check out the Shiva times and, um, and come and be with this beautiful family that has been with so many of us through... Um, our own times of heartache um, in years past. The funeral is tomorrow morning, um, so I hope also that many of you will be with us there. Um, I also give uh, our great love to Pierre Olivier, who um, is in the room. Uh, I saw you moments ago, but you're not where you were. Oh, okay. Um, our love to Pierre and to the whole family as they continue to grieve their beloved um, Tatiana. 
and to Elad Vashbanks, um, our dear uh, our dear Elad, who lost his grandma Ziva. Um, and so on this day that we honor Zivas, we also honor his beautiful and strong and courageous grandma um, who died and was buried in Israel um, this week. And may her memory always be a blessing. Um, thank you for, for sharing a little bit about her with us, Elad, and we hope to learn more. Um, and with that, I am very pleased to turn it over to Rabbi Morris Panitz to share with us some words of Torah this morning. Um, I do want to say that this is Repro Shabbat. This is uh, the Shabbat on the calendar, Parshat Mishpatim, when NCJW, the National Council of Jewish Women, has designated a time for us to pay attention to reproductive justice and to what it means to, uh, to be denied reproductive justice in this country. And so that is um, related to what Rabbi Panitz is going to be talking about. So for those who are here with little ones, um, I want you to just be aware that that will be the topic today. And you might want to be um, sensitive about little ears in the room today. Um, Rabbi Panitz. Shabbat Shalom. When you flip through the pages of this week's Parsha, it's immediately clear, as Ziva mentioned, that the drama of narrative has given way to a less exciting genre, the listing of laws. And I'm sorry to the 25% of the room that I just offended with that comment. <laughs> Building on the recitation of the Ten Commandments last week, this week's Parsha, aptly named Laws, Mishpatim, gives us 53 of them. We've entered a new chapter of our narrative, one that frankly reads much more as a legal code than as a story. Perhaps the best known moment from this week's Parsha happens at the very end in chapter 24 when we read about a public ritual where Moses writes down all of the laws that have just been listed and reads them to the people and they famously respond, Naase venishma. We will do and we will listen. It's an odd response, an inverted order. We'd expect them to first say, we'll listen, and then, having understood what the law is asking of them, then we'll do. In other words, we'll follow these laws based on our understanding of them. But the commentators celebrate the Israelites for responding the way they did, praising their eagerness, admiring their faith in both law and lawgiver. More poignantly, the rabbis pick up on the experiential truth of the Israelites' response. We often don't know the deeper meaning of our actions, our commitments, until we follow through on them, until we build a life of devotion to these practices. Na'aseh will follow the mitzvot v'nishma, and will come to understand what meaning they hold. Meaning will be discovered through practice, or in the words of our very own Lauren Buckman, will make to know. In this read, Na'aseh Ishma is the perfect response for this moment in the Torah. We're at the very beginning of accepting a new legal paradigm to live by. The foundation of the law code has been laid, 53 mitzvot added to the terms of the covenant, and there's much more to come. This story makes sense. But there's another version of the story, a stranger one, a more complicated one that I'd like to share today with the help of the great rabbinic troublemaker, Rashi. Vaikach Sefer Habrit. And Moses took the record of the covenant and read it aloud to the people and they responded, Naaseh v'nishma. It would appear that this event happens at the end of the Parsha because, well, that's where it's located. But Rashi makes a puzzling move. He says, Parasha zo ne'emra kodem aseret hadibro. This section happened before the Ten Commandments. Rashi is suggesting that the Torah is not in chronological order, meaning chapter 24 happened before the giving of the Ten Commandments. Moses reads from the record of the covenant before the covenant is filled with laws. The people say, na'asev nishma, before they've been commanded to do anything specific which raises an enormous question. What did Moses say that prompted this response? If it wasn't all of these laws, what was it? You with me? Okay. 
So here's Rashi's answer. Moses read to the people gathered at the, bain, at the base of Mount Sinai, quote, the story of creation through the present moment. Mi breshit ve'ad matan Torah. Essentially, he read them the whole Torah up to this point. I want you to imagine the scene. Just months ago, these people were slaves in Egypt. Their parents were slaves. No one they knew remembered life before Pharaoh. But here they were, having experienced liberation, the parting of the sea, the beginning of something new. They're ready to write a new future, build a new society where they could be free. And Moses says, wait, let me tell you a story. There used to be nothing, just darkness. When out of the void, a voice emerged and said, let there be light, light alongside darkness. Day by day, the world came into being shimmering with new vitality, nothing too big or too small to be seen as good by God above. We lived in a garden, but not for long because life, it seems, is filled with choice. And sometimes one moment can change everything. Did you know, my people? that the first parents lived through the death of one of their children? His name was Abel. That pain never goes away. And we can't ever stop telling their story. We come from Abraham and Sarah, who late in life knew that something else was possible, that the truth that they had lived by wasn't the truth they were called to. They left it all behind to build something bigger than themselves, to bring blessings into the world. But you know, it wasn't easy. Have I ever told you that Abraham had a child named Yishmael? And he was kicked out of his father's home. A whole nation came from him, but maybe with different choices, he could have been part of ours. There was Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob and Esau, beautiful love and bitter rivalry. We, we got our name from a wrestling match. Seems like that's who we're meant to be. Do you know how we got to Egypt in the first place? How Joseph was sold by his brothers? How he saved our people through times of famine and drought? How we became slaves when Joseph was forgotten and fear of the other prevailed? I don't have to explain to you what it felt like to be slaves. You remember that. But now that you're free, I ought to remind you how your bones ached and your hopes faded, how you debated whether or not to bring children into a world of suffering, how we left in the middle of the night, how we stood at the water's edge, how we danced and sang and were finally free. This is our story. And the people responded, Na'asev and Ishma. We will do and we will listen. And then Moses went up the mountain to receive the law. Na'asev nishma, in Rashi's telling, is not a response to law. It's a response to story, to our story. No detail spared, the shameful alongside the admirable, the backsliding together with the progress. Abraham in his moral greatness pleading with God to save the innocent people of Sodom. Alongside Abraham and his tragic silence lifting the knife against his son. Na'asev and Ishma, we'll do something with our story. We'll listen to it. We'll learn from it. We'll seek to understand the traumas we've experienced, the triumphs of our resilience. We'll carry this story with us into the project of creating a new society so that every law we fashion is shaped by the hard-earned wisdom of our story. Story before law, Agada blossoms into halacha. That's Rashi's sequence of how things happened. But I think Rashi might be wrong. And the reason I think that is because had the story been told before the law, the first four laws of Mishpatim wouldn't be about keeping Israelite slaves they would have been about abolishing slavery. Hearing the story of their own degradation in this crucial moment 
would have generated a more compassionate, a more just law. And so we're left with a legal code that sometimes remembers the wisdom of our story and sometimes ought to remember it. But in a sense, Rashi gets the last laugh. Because regardless of the sequence of the events in the Torah, we read the story before we read the law. We read Genesis before we read Exodus. We read liberation before revelation. And that becomes a lens and a tool for us to see and reshape the law in accordance with the wisdom of our story. Because make no mistake, law concretizes the values of a society. It shapes the contours of who advances and who is left behind, of whose life matters and whose does not. Law can be the agent of discrimination, the justification of violence, the denial of dignity. And so too, it can be a force for good, a stepping stone to higher ideals. But law needs a conversational partner. It needs story. If law is the ground upon which we stand, story must be the water that softens the soil, the water that splits open caked earth so that something new can emerge. When law leaves story behind, it runs the risk of disregarding the human beings it's meant to protect. This has been the reality of far too many women and people who need abortion access in the last year and a half since Roe v. Wade was overturned and law became a tool for violence. There are too many stories to share of women denied their reproductive rights, prevented from accessing the care that will save their lives. Too many stories of frantically traveling out of state to receive an abortion, of women being forced to carry and deliver a fetus that they knew all along wouldn't survive. Too many stories of a pregnant person's body and soul and future endangered and dismissed by the cruelty of law. Too many stories to turn away from them. And so here I want to share with you one with the prayer that story can be the catalyst for reimagined law. After five months of in vitro fertilization, multiple surgeries, and an early miscarriage, Blair Nelson got pregnant on her sixth MBO transfer. Blair and her husband were overjoyed, but a routine 12 week, at a routine 12 week appointment, they received the devastating news that the fetus had limb body defect, meaning all of the fetus's organs, including the heart, were growing outside of the body. Blair and her husband live in Texas, where multiple bans prohibit nearly all abortions with no exceptions for cases of fatal fetal anomalies. They packed their bags and traveled to Colorado to receive care. But during her procedure, she began bleeding, and the doctors suspected she had a placenta accreta, a potentially deadly complication. Blair had to choose between removing her uterus or a risky intervention to stop the bleeding, which thankfully was ultimately successful. Blair's doctor later told her that the placenta accreta likely developed in the month-long delay it took for her to find care out of state. And had she been able to terminate upon diagnosis at 12 weeks, this complication wouldn't have happened. One story among many. One story dotting the map of the 21 states that now ban abortion or restrict the procedure earlier than the standard set by Roe v. Wade. We must tell their stories, your stories. 
Tell them on the way to the ballot box. On the way to amending state constitutions, on the way to enshrining the right to reproductive freedom for everyone in this country. Let these stories soften our hearts and strengthen our resolve. Let these stories guide us to action and move us to fight for law that is just and wise. Shabbat Shalom. Page 184 for Chatzik Kaddish, and then we'll close with Musaf Amida. <laughs> to the Musaf Amidah for Rosh Chodesh, which is on page 193 with the additions for Shabbat. Baruch Atalai Eloheinu 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 Abraham Eloheinu Sarah Eloheinu Yitzchak Eloheinu Yitzchak Eloheinu Yaakov Eloheinu Le'ab Eloheinu Rachel Eloheinu Gadol HaGibor Ba'anora El El Yom Yom El Chasadim Tomim Ve'kol Ne'akol Ezocher Chasevo Tume Vigo Elibnei Ve'nayim Naman Shmo Biyava Melech Hozer, Moshia, Magin Baruch Ata Adonai, Magin Avram, Ata Gibor, Leolam, Lamechem, Etim, Adarav, Leoshia, Mashi Baruch, Umir, Tegah, Shem, Mechal, Kel, Chaim, Bechesed, Mechayim, Etim, Rachamim, Rabim, Somech, Noflim, Rafecholim, Umotiv, Asurim, Umkayem, Amun, Atoli, Shene, Apa, Nicha, Mocha, Baal, Giburot, Umid, Melech, Melech, Menit, Umchayim, Nasmiach, Yeshua, Kadosh,
Baruch Baranai Mim It got out Amen. Alma de Brahirute, the Yamelik Malhute, the Hayahon of Yomichon, who Hayah for the Israel, Agalah with Mankavi, they meru Amen. Ye Hishmela, the Bora, the Alam Yome, my Yahibara. It barra, we stab up with a baby from Mantikase, we got down in the middle of the Page 
Kaddish is on page 207. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei rabah. Amen. V'yalma divra kirite v'yamlich malchute v'chayichon v'yomechon v'chayi d'chol v'yit Yisrael v'agala v'yizman kariv v'imru. Amen. Yehi shemei rabah mevorach le'olam o me'omayat. Yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnaseh Vita dar, vita la, vita lal, shme de kucha, brehu. Le ila minko, virchata, vishirata, tush bechata, vinechemata, de amiran be ama, vimru, amen. Yehe shlama raba min shemaya, vechayim, alinu ve alko yisrael, vimru, amen. O se shalom bim roma, hu ya ase shalom, alinu ve alko yisrael, vimru, amen. I want to invite Ziva and Sonia and all of the friends from. Limudim and any cousins and any friends from school or from camp who are here to come up and join us as we close our service in just a moment. And as you're making your way up, um, today is Rosh Chodesh. There's a Rosh Chodesh uh, women's circle tonight. So if anyone's interested in joining for that, beautiful way to connect. Um, you can talk to the people who are who are happy about that in the room right now. You can hear them um, and talk to Deb, of course. Um, and also, I just want to share, I'm going, I'm going to be on the road for a few days, so if you have friends and family in Miami or Scottsdale, Arizona, or Ann Arbor, or Detroit, or I don't know where else I'm going to be, Atlanta, um, tell them to come out. It would be nice. I love meeting the extended Ikar Mishpacha, so, uh, so that's, a, that's a fun thing we can do. Um, so I invite everyone to please rise in whatever way you're able as we close our service on the left-hand side of page 204, and then we make our way upstairs to eat lunch and hear from Eliana. Shabbat shalom. Ein kelohenu. Ein kelohenu. Can't come west to LA, can't come west to South. No, 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 Message, 